Let's take you here for now. Today marks 35 years of Equator Quenaval battle. The Cuban Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs, the Russian Embassy delegates, as well as various liberation movement organizations are expected to attend and deliver messages of support. For more on the story, let's cross now to SABC News a reporter Kaili Kumalo. Kaili thank you so much for your time this afternoon. Talk to us about the importance of this commemoration. Well, very much so. Now, it's an exceptionally important day in the context of liberation in Southern Africa. In fact, it's dubbed as uh, Southern Africa's Liberation Day, given, of course, uh, the battle that was very ferocious in Kutukonavale. It's marked uh, as a very important day that's paved the way for the liberation of Namibia and eventually of South Africa. So quite a, a number of dignitaries have uh, converged here at uh, the Freedom Park to mark the very important day. But to try and look at the perspective of the Communist Party. We're joined by the General Secretary of uh, the Communist Party, Mr. Mabaila. So thank you so much indeed, uh, sir, for your time. So by all accounts, a very important day when you look at, uh, you know, that day, the very fateful moment in Angola, in the very dark moments uh, for this particular region. But today we look back with... Uh, a bit of joy because these countries now are free and facing new challenges. Yes, indeed. Uh, it was a heroic moment, uh, very important for us. And uh, thanks to the Cuban combatants, um, the Angolans, uh, the military advisors from the Soviet Union, uh, as well as uh, the comrades of SWAPO, who were really in the thick of things, and a small contingent of controversies that joined uh, this, this critical battle. And it is that battle that guaranteed the freedom of uh, Namibia as well as the freedom of South Africa, of course, the release of uh, political prisoners. Um, it was a, a, an ultimate battle, very intensive, uh, you, you, are, you are very right, extremely ferocious, but uh, it was uh, the heroic uh, deeds of Fidel Castro and his um, a, a big team of combatants uh, in the name of uh, Operation Carlota, who was a, a Cuban um, a slave, uh, from uh, was a, 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 a Spanish slave in Cuba from Angola and therefore that's why Fidel Castro named that operation in her and in, uh, in Cuba uh, Carlota led a mission against Spanish slavery and she was decapitated by the slave masters uh, slave masters of uh, um, uh, um, Spain so in that regard um, it was also a befitting moment to our great forefathers and mothers who fought heroically like uh, Carlota against uh, oppression, against uh, imperialism and capitalism. Imperialism, as you know, uh, was the expansion of the capitalist system in the world. So this defeat uh, in Angola by the Cuban forces, the Angolan forces, the FAPLA forces, and all other revolutionaries in the region symbolized the people of the region's heroism uh, to get freedom at whatever cost. And um, we, we, we should ap applaud uh, these contributions and to thank our people for staying steadfastly against uh, any forms of oppression to where we are today. It's a very important day that must be celebrated uh, properly across the, the region and especially here in South Africa because we became some of the main beneficiaries out of this particular day. Mm. But, but once again, say it comes at a very critical time uh, where you have the Russia-Ukraine conflict and recently we saw the International Criminal Court uh, saying that uh, there is a warrant of arrest out for the Russian Federation president and Vladimir Putin. Uh, what do you make of these developments? We do know that this is uh, South Africa's ally, inevitably your ally is the Communist Party. What would be your advice to the South African government? We know that uh, the BRICS summit is coming to our shores, so South Africa may find itself in this nightmarish position where it would have to carry out its obligations since it signed uh, the Rome Statutes. But uh, what's the point in this issue? Uh, firstly, Kaya is to indicate that um, uh, this battle in Cuba was almost the last frontier of the Cold War because uh, soon thereafter uh, there will be the disintegration of the Soviet system, which was the pillar against uh, a unipolar world uh, of the Western countries. And we have always balanced the world in a multipolar way, as well as having the non-aligned movement uh, in that regard. Uh, today we have uh, new battles. 
uh, that are showing uh, uh, the rejection of uh, unipolarity since uh, uh, the, the, the fall of the Soviet Union. And therefore, uh, Russia has emerged as an important pillar to the system of a multipolar uh, world. In other words, a system, a system of international uh, a democracy, multiple democracy, not where one country thinks its values are universal, like what the Western world think. They think that their values should be complied by everyone, which is quite uh, unacceptable. So that's what uh, Russia represents today. That's what BRICS, for instance, represent today. Because at the core of their rejection and, and possible uh, disintegration of, uh, of the BRICS and even attack on Russia, they think that um, the whole de-dollarization principle adopted by BRICS countries will fall because we are condemned today to poverty by dollar, by US dollar, that is imposed as a singular a, a, a currency for all international trade, imposed everywhere else, of course, uh, backed by, by, by the euro as well. So the pre President Putin and his participation in the BRICS countries is extremely important for us in the, in the process to reconfigure world power relations, to create new world power relations against one dominant uh, 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 figure, which is the US and, and Europe, which speaks as one through the NATO, that is not Atlantic Treaty Organization. As you know, with the fall of the Soviet Union, the Warsaw Pact group disintegrated, but the, the NATO didn't disintegrate. It should have disintegrated as well. So the ICC's uh, nonsensical um, um, warrant against uh, President Putin, it's immaterial. It cannot be, it's, it has no binding effect on us. The IEC did not go for people who killed the people of uh, Yugoslavia, the Americans. They did not go for the people of America who, who killed the Iraqis people. When they invaded Iraq, they created an impression that they are weapons of mass destruction. They didn't find none. Yet the IEC has not issued any warrant of arrest against uh, any U.S. president. Uh, Bagbo was arrested here uh, in order for the, for the French government to still take cocoa uh, as, uh, to determine the price of cocoa in the world market, which they don't produce. It's produced largely in the Ivory Coast. So they humiliated President Bagbo and, and his wife uh, through the, the, the warrant of arrest exercised by this uh, 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 criminal entity of imperialism, the ICC. It has no credibility whatsoever. Of course, the problem has been that African countries or uh, developing countries, when they saw any other instrument that can limit the abuse of power, they thought they could go for it. But we have seen that th this institution is actually a creation of imperialist forces who do not even belong to it. The Americans do not belong to it. By the way, even President uh, uh, Russia has not signed the, 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 the Rome Statute. So it's not binding. And to think that South Africa will be foolish to try and arrest President Putin. I mean, really, are they mad? I think that thing, it's immaterial. It cannot be exercised. On the contrary, we will be organizing and to welcome President Putin in South Africa as progressive forces in order to strengthen the new international uh, world order. Mm. Uh, and what do you make of uh, those who may criticize South Africa and say it does have an international obligation to, to make sure that this, this is possible? Especially also, I mean, you, when you listen to the Deputy Chairman of the Security Council, uh, Medvedev, he made it very clear that anyone who arrests President Putin uh, that would be a declaration of the war. Uh, do you concur with such sentiments? Yes, I fully concur with him uh, fully. I don't think it was also meaning that South Africa, because South Africa would not full, would be foolish enough to do such a thing. But any other person that can try to do that, they know. I mean, Russia is a great power. Uh, we know that. And I think the West made a mistake. They thought they've weakened it enough. Uh, and um, unfortunately, they didn't. Or, or Russia preserve its own uh, 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 sovereignty, including military integrity. That's why it can defend itself today. So that thing cannot be exercised. And I don't think President Putin will dare go to Britain, for instance, or any of those uh, European capitals that are fighting him at the moment. He, he should go to friendly countries. And friendly countries know we benefited, as, as we're demonstrating here, from the support of the Soviet Union. Uh, the Soviet Union, Moscow, we, we called it Moscow, they're still Moscow under the Russian Federation. It's one entity, one people. 
they only change social systems, but it's one entity, one people. The Russian resources served the African people, the people of the South, to, through their liberation. So we'll be organizing programs of solidarity to welcome President Putin to South Africa. All right. Uh, thank you so much indeed for your time. Of course, Sunati, that is uh, the SACP's uh, General Secretary, Salima Baila, really talking about a very topical issue in as far as uh, the warrant of arrest is concerned for the Russian Federation President Putin. All right, Kailisa, thank you so much for that update. Kailisa Kumalo out there for us, just covering the Queto Canavali battle commemoration that's currently ongoing in Freedom Park.